said, Joyce, you really should start a nonprofit. And I said, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to just, again, I was just saying to Joyce that this is my first time in the gallery. Um, and she so lovingly said, which I just adore, she said, oh, my gosh, shame on you. And what, what that brought up for me, and I'm just going to start with this, because I, what it me meant to me in that space is I was, have been denying myself mm. what this place has to offer, what this sacred space, what I feel is a sacred space has to offer. And so I'm coming to you and I'm sitting here with you with just so much reverence because the little bit that I do know about you, um, I've learned from, as we were saying earlier, I've learned from the people, like vicariously living through the people who have spoken about you, have been able to have their art displayed here in this place that you have created. Um, and so it is not only such an honor, but I feel like I'm giving a gift to myself. To, that the universe somehow brought me to this place, us to this, into this circle together. And I'm just grateful. And so I would love for you to speak about, about this place that you have created. If you don't mind. <laughs> that I've been missing out okay. on. <laughs> I should put you on punishment, but I won't. <laughs> For me, I'll take it. Actually, I just started, uh, well, it'll be 18 years in March. And I used to uh, have hair salons. And I worked for a company as an educator platform artist. So I would travel all across the, um, the country. And I would always go to galleries. I grew up in Berkeley around a lot of artists, okay. and I went to uh, CCA, well it was CCAC when I went. So after traveling across country, um, I would always go to galleries and uh, museums, and I just felt like there just wasn't, uh, or I didn't see mm -hmm. enough spaces to uh, exhibit uh, black artists. And a lot of galleries, a lot of spaces, there's always, I mean, there were, you know, little gift shops, little uh, boutiques and that kind of thing, and some art. And then there were also some galleries, but just not enough. Mm -hmm. And so I decided that I would open a gallery. So I had this vision that, you know, when you check in the hotel and you get the room and the matching drapes and the, the uh, poster on the sofas and all of that. Right, right. I had this idea that I was going to walk into the Hyatt <laughs> and all of my business. Yes, you walk into the Hyatt and <laughs> tell them how it is. Oh my gosh, so you already so, have vision for space. That's so beautiful. So then I, um, oh, we were scheduled to go to take our designs to this um, place and it was Costa Rica, I can't remember. You know, I'm 74, so I can't remember. I guess the week or two before we were going, my mother had a stroke, so I couldn't go. So I never did get there. And wow. so then I decided to open the, the gallery. And that's what, and I mean, I literally just opened the gallery. Didn't know okay. anything about running a gallery. I mean, I knew about business because I had hair salons. So I already had an accountant. I already had an attorney, uh, you know, into the bookkeeping and, you know, that kind of thing that you, is a must. I just kind of figured it out. When you decided to open this gallery, mm -hmm. 
and just open it, did you just trust that it would come, it would be filled the way that it needed to be filled, or did you already have, um, were you working with well, some you know, artists? Like or? I said, I grew up in Berkeley, so mm -hmm. I knew a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, there was an art professor at uh, UC Berkeley who was visiting here from London, and I met him at a uh, party uh, at a friend, and I told him I wanted to open the gallery. And he says, oh, great, go cool. I think that's, you know, wonderful. <laughs> so anyway, go for it. Yeah. He, uh, he helped me in that he brought some of his students from UC Berkeley. That was my first, my opening of my exhibit. And then my best friend, little sister at the time, was uh, Robert Refrig's uh, girlfriend. They're married now. But, and she and I were going to go into the um, textile design business together. I mean, I knew what I, how I wanted it to look, so that was the problem. I didn't know anything about a press release, because Jeffy was like, Joyce, do you have your press release? And I said, <laughs> press release? What, what does and that have to do with your press release? And I said, well, what is a press release? And he was like, oh my God, because everybody was freaking out. <laughs> Jeffrey asked me if I had a press release. I don't know what he's talking about. And she says, oh, Joyce. So uh, Rob, Bob had his press secretary write my press release. Oh, fantastic. So then, you know, like these little labels on the wall, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. had no idea how they were done. My opening was really tacky. I would have opened I would have written mine. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, like, hey, there's always a beginning. It, take that, type it out, and then take, uh, taped it on the wall. Yeah. Because I didn't know how to do it. It was so much I did not know how to do it. <laughs> so, and I had a lot of people around me that just, and a lot of the artists, and like I said, I really knew a lot of artists. Yeah. They just kind of uh, guided me. You know, they didn't have a gallery, but they had been in galleries. So they knew what they needed, and that was beautiful. Yeah. Really, you know, it was started off as just a, excuse me, a fine art gallery. But I've, uh, you know, I was here so long, and you know, I just thought I was going to be selling all these thirty thousand dollar paint. You know, I just thought I was. I really did thought think I was going to be. I guess I thought everybody was like me. Yeah, I love art, and I've always, you know, bought art. And it didn't happen like that. Uh, I would cry, and then I would call Jeffrey. Say, Jeffrey, I just can't do it anymore. And he says, Oh no, Joyce, you got to stay. And he, we would pray. He would pray with me. Oh. I could. I just couldn't do it. He would come upstairs, and some of the uh, young people would be upstairs in my office, and I'd give him his rent. And then I turn around and ask him, Well. Could you have somebody pay my PG&E? I can't pay my PG&E. And they were like, God, that's your landlord. <laughs> <laughs> and he asked him to pay your PG&E. I said, well, you know, if he wants well, to you want me to stay, you're like, yes, if you really want this to work. Yeah, and so then I realized that um, because I, um, a lot of young people have come in uh, to help me, to write for me, um, the press release, to work the computer, just to do a lot of the things that you need to have done. Uh, and they just came in and, and just worked with me. I just loved them. I started a nonprofit for youth, um, Foundation to, of the Arts. Uh, because that. now, you know, I've, I've worked with, uh, I don't know, it seems like all of the Bay Area artists uh, have shown here. The group in San Francisco of uh, young spoken word artists well, there's several groups, one in San Francisco and one here. So they come here and they do uh, spoken word. We have dance, uh, whatever they suggest. Uh, Mama Janny, we, can we do this? Or Mama, Mama Joyce, you should do that. It's okay, look, do it. We've done everything but swung from the ceiling. And we did have, we did have an art exhibit okay. where the guy had a, uh, it was uh, from the ceiling. It was like a sculpture that, like, Call the dancer, the um, trapeze artist. We've had dancing, we've had poetry, we've had weddings, we've had receptions, we've had repasts, we've had um, just a lot of things. And then I felt really good that I had a space that the young people uh, really appreciated and wanted to be here. 
So, <clears throat> because oftentimes they have so much talent and that, you know, they don't have money to, to really uh, pay for things. So. And they felt safe here. This, this, this was their safe space. Mm -hmm. would, um, so then I realized, well, yes, I am supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily just to sell art or, you know, but just to pr promote art and to be a safe place for all of my young people out here in the world. Oh, I, that's why I'm still here, because of them. Um, the high school kids, the foster kids, the kids in the community that are not, you know, so many. And this was the perfect place, too, because I'm right downtown Oakland. And I keep the door open, and a lot of young kids pull their parents in. You know, they look up and they see color and yes. art, and they want to come in. Oh, and yes. and it's also good that I have been that I'm here, the perfect spot, because a lot of us are not comfortable going into a gallery. There's art, uh, and there's so many have they been, if the school didn't take it, they haven't been to a museum. You know, a certain uh, galleries have this. I don't know, like people like they're snobs or they're yeah, they're, you know it's unwelcoming. It, you know, it's very very. It's giving you the message that you actually don't. Really I mean, I had this other artist, Louis Delsart from uh, Atlanta. Uh, he was a art professor at Morehouse. He just passed last year, but he used to call me from uh, New York, at, uh, and we talk until one or two o'clock in the mm -hmm. morning. He says, Joyce, you just you're just so cool. Because most galleries, they don't even talk to you. And I said, well, you know, I just, you're my family. I mean, this is, you know, growing up, I couldn't find, I had the, you know how you, when you're young and you're trying to find where you fit. And uh, the only place that I fit growing up and to this day is in a creative environment. That's why I'm here. I'm here for the people. I'm here for my children. I'm here for the young people. That's why I'm still here. I really try hard to to hang on to the space. And when I say young people, I mean high school, um, even uh, middle school, young college kids, young kids are of college age but are not in college. I'm here for them. This time in my life, I'm lonely. So I don't need them. <laughs> The company had a good time. No, no, it's not. Oh, <laughs> yes, yeah, it's just so much. It's just not, you know, um, it's not that important. As I asked God, why am I here? Because it was just so hard. I was just spending money, spending, you know, all of my retirement. And then when all these young people started showing up, then I realized, well, okay, this is why I'm here. And right now, uh, in August of next year, I'll be 75. And I'm just waiting for this young sister to come through the doors, a young brother, that have the desire and the passion to want to work their own business and work with other artists, you know, and have a gallery. It's all set up. And when that person shows up, I know that it's time for me to just say, oh, step there. And I have a son mm -hmm. who's in Atlanta, married, has a, and I have a grandson, doing fine, is not interested in the art. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, when he comes here, he goes upstairs in my office and goes to sleep. <laughs> you have created this, this space for another art form, a kind of spiritual art form of being able to grow and find out who you are and mm -hmm. what what your potential is, mm -hmm. what 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 gifts you bring to the world and how that sacrifice that you're you're making in order to mm -hmm. create that space is something like I was talking about from the beginning, mm -hmm. that that gift mm -hmm. to to this space, to to Oakland, to to the world. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to ask you about the, um, how, because the, you were talking about how much you love art, but mm -hmm. 
it sounds like there's something so much deeper than that, right? Like you love the, the, the art, but there's this whole art form of story behind it. I think about all the, 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 um, the diverse expressions of art that come through in this space. Art is life. I mean, I, I just couldn't survive without art. I, so I grew up in Berkeley with seven brothers. <clears throat> so I spent a lot of time to myself at the house with, you know, just you and your mom and well, mm -hmm. I don't know, my sister, but she's like 14 years younger. And seeing my brothers, uh, my brothers went through, I have four brothers that are deceased. Uh, so seeing wow. them go through the kinds of things that they, some of them, uh, went through. I'm just very, I'm, I'm just very attached to the community. It's like when I see the young kids out there, the young boys out there, and I have no problem telling them to pull their pants up and you know that kind of thing. And since my brothers were so, two were 26 uh, when they were killed. So when I see these young boys out here on the corner. I know it's not my brother, but I see my brothers when I was when they were young and I was young, mm, and I just couldn't. And I'm comfortable with them, yeah. so it's easy for me to. I'm not afraid of them. Mm -hmm. It's easy for me to embrace them because I know <laughs> that my brother, uh, brother too, uh, were really good guys and had really good hearts yeah. and really creative and talented, mm -hmm. they were killed. So and usually so when, when young people are killed or shot, if it's not the, the police or, uh, what is it, black crime on crime, you think that they're, you know, they're just thugs, and they're not. Mm -hmm. And like I tell people that, you know, if you want to help young people, you have to embrace them. And I mean, uh, just really like you would your 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 own child, you know. It's like I was. I'm every rally they've had. I've been right there. Every month, <laughs> there's this picture of the the uh, rally for the Oscar Grant, the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, over because everything goes down 14th Street. Yeah, everything. And there's this whole picture with this sea of people, and there's this little woman with this little white hair. <laughs> And I was telling my uh, my brother and some friends, I said, you guys, you know, you're sitting there <clears throat> in your beautiful, comfortable homes in the hills or wherever, and you, you, you look down on these kids, mm. you know, uh, and, and all of the, uh, the, the window breaking and the vandalism and all of that shit, that's not fair. No. <laughs> but we just, that's the first thing that comes to mind. That's the first thing. And he said, you know, you kind of should be out there with them. I think it's important for young people to know that the elders got their back. Yeah, that's you, can feel, you can feel when somebody cares about you. Of course. You can feel when somebody think you're less than. So naturally, you're going to react. Again, it says so much about what you keep saying, and that is, you're supposed to be here. I'm this to is be what here. you, and that's so much a part of it. That's like I feel like that's the, the art of life, the art of the elder storytelling, the art of what it means to be an elder in the community. Mm -hmm. And of course, it just makes me go right to I do um, prisoner human rights movement, and so mm -hmm. and we have elders in prison. They've been mm -hmm. in for decades. Mm -hmm. We need those elders here. They're doing their work in there with the youth. We need them. We also need them out here. They need to stop. So I think about the power of our elders. At the uh, 50th uh, anniversary, I had several uh, events here. Well, they were all over Oakland, but we had some here. And I met guys that had <laughs> been in prison for 20 years, 30 years, and some had just gotten uh, out. And then, um, uh, Emory Douglas, who was the uh, Minister of Culture for the Black Panther 
Boy, I had a chill here for him. Mm. The line is out the door. <laughs> yes. Young people. Yes. Oh. Young people. And he was so good. He was just so good. He's just so humble. I just, I keep telling him he should just marry me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know he has a wife, but <laughs> I should be one of them. But he's just <laughs> such a nice, warm oh. uh, person. And he stood here and he signed. Uh, he did not leave until the last young person left out the door. You know, he just stayed here. I mean, for hours, just because there was so many of them. And he wasn't so, there. And so they're hot back there, like, mm. hungry for them. Yes, they are. You know, I decided, because so many young people were coming in here, uh, you know, like jazz groups, and uh, like I said, spoken word. Uh, we used to do paint parties. And I decided, uh, no, this friend said, Joyce, you really should start a nonprofit. And I said, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> They're like, yeah, well. How do you do that? <laughs> I never stopped you before. Because <laughs> she says, you're doing it. I said, well, I don't know how to do that. She says, but you're already doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I said, OK. So anyway, I started the, the Joyce Gordon Foundation of the Arts. I started out doing the uh, uh, Youth Art F Festival. It's called Oye, Oakland Youth Art Explosion. Wow. And it was in the <laughs> streets on 14th Street. And so we would have a, a, a stage with jazz musicians. And I mean, these guys, they could blow. Uh, which is yes. really good. Jazz musicians, dancers, uh, praise dancers, martial arts, uh, the dance companies, the martial arts. You know, I try to think of everything that young people do. I uh, just have to, I'm going to interrupt you for just a second because I don't want to assume. Mm -hmm. Praise dancing? Praise dancers, those are dancers from the church. That, okay, that's what Most I assume. Most of the church is now know, I do not thing. Have... You don't go to church, girl. I'm no, sorry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I do, I do. It's in the forest. <laughs> that's my church. <laughs> uh, so but we had a couple of uh, little groups uh, from this, oh, this young man that mm -hmm. works with uh, young people trying to keep the violence down in East Oakland. So he brought these groups together. But like I said, we had spoken wow. word artists there. And the only thing I didn't have uh, was hip hop. Because everybody knows hip hop. Or I don't even know if that's what they still call right, right, that. Okay. Uh, but jazz is just, I mean, these are like Trump, uh, 17 year old trumpet player, 14 year old so keyboard fantastic. player, uh, 19 year old drummer. I mean, mm, these mm, kids yeah. they have so much talent. Right, and they need to see each other. That this is actually happening. It's all, I, so we had the stage with all of the performers, and then we had uh, a youth art exhibit. It was here in the gallery, mm -hmm. stall, and labeled just like the professional. And we had artist talk, where they uh, that Friday night before the festival. And the artists would talk, the young artists would talk. This was middle school to 23, oh my God. Uh, would talk about their art. And at the opening, they would be walking around and talking and looking at each other's oh. work and, you know, like growing up. What an honor, right? <laughs> <laughs> what a way to be an honor yeah. yourself, too. But there's still so many young people out there are missing out. They haven't connected. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, you know what? They like festivals, music, and you know, all the stuff going on. So Especially maybe, when it's about them. Right. <laughs> and if they see someone that looks just like them mm -hmm. and around the same age and they're doing this, maybe that would give them the courage to do it. Absolutely. Because a lot of times you say you don't want to do something because you're not comfortable. Because you don't, you haven't experienced that before. Right. You know, right. you don't want to try. You don't want to stand out. Right. 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 And then in December, I would have a um, a uh, youth holiday jazz concert, and we would do. We did it a couple of years upstairs at Jeffrey's, and we did it here. So it was like all jazz musicians, and we had this spread, it was just laid beautifully, and then a few of the um, young people. 
could sell their artwork. And we raised money to buy jackets for underserved youth and foster youth. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the, that's the only really fundraiser that I had. We did have an art, art auctions because the artists are so cool about donating artwork for auctions, you know, to raise. And so the plan is to have uh, workshops here uh, at the gallery. I wanted, I didn't want them to, the artists to go to the schools. I want to take, bring them out of their environment here mm-hmm. so they could work with uh, uh, professional artists, you know, yes. and it wouldn't cost them anything. And then, you know, but then if they needed uh, tutoring, and a lot of times they don't, you don't have to be an artist. They don't have to be an artist, but it's a, uh, they may, you know, you give them something, you know. Right, you might, and, and sometimes we, we limit ourselves what we think art is, right? If it, it's just That's a painting. Right. Yeah. But you have, again, you just created this space to open up a full array, a full mm-hmm. diverse array of what it means to be artistic, creative. Right, and it's just like with the, because uh, uh, I partnered the first year with the West Oakland Youth Center, and I, but I had the artists go there and do. Um, the spoken word. So when you do spoken word, they have to write. Yeah. So that's uh, developing their writing skills and their spelling. Absolutely. And their vocabulary. And, and the you know, structure of the language. Right. How they, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Yes. It's definitely an art form. <laughs> yeah. If, if it's supposed to be, it will happen. And even like now with this, uh, uh, this, uh, Corona, the virus, mm-hmm. and everything being shut down. I mean, it's it's been terrible. But at the same time, uh, I think there's some positive things uh, that are happening because people seem to be, I don't know, more supportive, more caring. Uh, there's just all kinds of groups, all kinds of people pulling think funds together to make sure people are being fed. We have this opportunity, and you can see it in a lot of places. Right. We are actually, we, we are fighting for our humanity, and we are doing it by coming together, like you're saying, and because we have to. Right? It's the only way. It's the only way to survive. It's the only way to survive. It's the only way to survive. It is. You know? But there's also a spiritual survival, I feel, that's happening. Well, there's a, there's a, I, I'm hoping, maybe it's my I'm hoping, I'm always very hopeful and try to be positive about the level of consciousness raising around what's happening and, and that it, the we is the only way we're going to get through this, the, the love, I mean, I'm all about the, the, the you know, love is the most powerful force in the universe. Well, this is what I'm really about love. Not right, of course. <laughs> you really got to be there. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. people are getting there. Mm-hmm. You know, they really get. I And you're he- but you're doing it. That's what you know. you've been doing this whole time. I mean, Joyce, it is such an incredible. And I, 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 I keep just wanting to reach out and hug and hug and hold your hands. <laughs> I and mean, it's just such a delightful, what a, just a beautiful being you are. And just sharing what it is that you're sharing here. I, I wanted to just mention something. I can't help it because Malik is here and he's filming us, which is really beautiful. And you're talking about passing the torch. And I just wanted to mention how our, our situation is very similar in this place mm-hmm. because the torch has just been passed to Malik as to become the editor of the, oh, of the San Francisco oh, Daily National yeah. Black Newspaper. Mm-hmm. And, um, and realizing how important that is. It's right? so important. Right? And so... I, and I wanted to, to mention that because it is so wonderful, but also because this space engenders the creating that energy in that space because I want that for you. You want that. And so I wanted to mm-hmm. share that we have, that this is something that's happening in common mm-hmm. and to open up that space for that energy so that mm-hmm. when the time is right, that person is going to come in, in your life. I mean, against all odds. Mm-hmm. So. I could talk to you all day, <laughs> uh, but um, I'm thinking we're probably coming somewhat to the end. And um, 
I wanted to give you the last word, but you did mention that you are going to be receiving an award tonight. Mm -hmm. And so if you wanted to share that, I would love it. And then I just want you to have the last word about the award tonight. It's really interesting, too, because it's a, another art thing. <laughs> oh. uh, and, uh, oh, gosh, this is terrible. I can't even think of the name of it. But anyway, they're giving me this community award or something. Another art but, center is honoring you. Mm -hmm. All right, that's beautiful. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, gosh, I did have something I wanted to say. But anyway, I don't know. It's been a joy talking with you and sharing. So um, we'll just wait and see. They're going to show up, and they're going to show up soon. Mm -hmm. It's going to be ready. Uh, Well, I'll tell you, I do want to, okay, I'm going to still give you the last word, but I did want to ask you, it, so it's a, it's a, it, it's recognizing, what, what's the award about? Why are they giving you this award? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Something around community, the arts, and providing a place, holding on or maintaining a place for the arts here for us. That's yeah. huge, Joyce. Uh, that, you know, that's what it's about. I was, I was on, it's going to be on Facebook. I was on there last night, and one of the, um, the guys uh, is a drummer. He's Paul Smith. And he says, I love Joyce Gordon. She, she is my sister by choice. And then this other guy might see Joyce. Everybody loves Joyce. I was in tears. I was like, wow. <laughs> this, is, this is, you know. Joyce, thank you. Thank you <laughs> so much for really for creating this, I call it a sacred space, for people to be not only seen to be embraced and seen on such a deep level mm -hmm. because we need the arts we need people to be their artistic creative selves in order for us to survive mm -hmm. anything we can't just live on money alone even though we need it i get it mm -hmm. so thank, thank you. you thank you thank you and it's been a pleasure talking with you <laughs> you make it so Easy for me. I'm so glad. It's so thank you. It's been a gift for me too. Mm -hmm. it really Do is. what I can, when I can, while mm -hmm. I can for my people. While the clouds roll back and the stars fill the night, that's why oh, I'm gonna stand up, take my people with me. Together we are going to a brand new home. Far across the river Can you hear freedom calling Calling me to answer Gonna keep on keeping on I can feel it in my bones